Welcome to the New Trust Economy, where your hosts, Blockchain 101 author and founder of Rise Housing, Monica Profit, and Inc. innovation columnist and brand casting strategist, Tracy Hazard, explore all things blockchain, ICO ventures, and cryptocurrency. Each week, they explore businesses, applications, and venture built on blockchain or cryptocurrency and address issues like women and diversity in tech, trust and distrust, and the economics of access and value. We would like to remind our listeners that investing in disruptive tech, ICOs, and cryptocurrency is speculative in nature and involves substantial risk of loss. We encourage you to invest carefully and do your due diligence first. Now, here's today's host, Monica Profit. Hello, and welcome to the New Trust Economy. I'm Monica Prophet, and I am here with Hasib Awan, the co-founder of BitAccess, the one, one of the largest networks of Bitcoin ATMs, as well as the CEO of Ifani, a wonderful cell phone uh, service provider and creator that is really addressing security and privacy and anti-SIM swapping in the using some incredible technology. So I'm very excited to talk to you about all of this. Thank you so much, Hasib. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you, Monica, for having me on the show. Um, So I realize you've done a lot of things over the years, and when I looked into your bio a little bit, I saw that you have been in the crypto space uh, since, I mean, I don't want to date you, but, you know, quite some time. You might be almost considered one of those crypto grandfathers uh, just by the fact that one year in crypto is like a dog year. There's like seven packed in there. Um, But you've been around and, and in this space since at least 2013, right? That's right, yeah. Okay, so it gives me a sense of um, how how weathered people are, but also how successful they've likely been based on just how long they've been involved in crypto. So congratulations for making it this long. And also congratulations on, I'm sure, being so involved in wonderful emerging technology. Did you start your your time in cryptocurrency with the Bit Access project, the ATM project, or did you start with something else? No, I bought Bitcoin. That was my oh, first that was just project. The that was just investing. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But like my first project was Bit Access, Bitcoin oh. ATM. So uh, before we go, I don't want to go too far down this, but I just think it's so interesting. And so many of our listeners, they oftentimes they haven't necessarily seen a lot of the crypto sphere. And this might be one of their first touch points. And when you have something that's so real and already used in other ways that now bridges cryptocurrency, I just can't help but, but think I want to make sure we touch on the amazing network of Bitcoin ATMs that you put all throughout the U.S. And all, it's international as well, correct? Yes, we are in 15 to 20 countries now. Oh my goodness. So yeah. um, for people that are wondering, you know, how are you going to get your crypto or how are you going to actually make it worth something to you? Bitcoin ATMs bridge that gap. And the people that were doing that early on really uh, made a killing, but also just served like such an important function. So you're on the kind of cutting edge of things. It's nice to, nice to see what you've been doing since then, since I don't know hardly anything about privacy and SIM swapping and issues like that with cell phones. How did you make this transition into a SIM, SIM swapping proof cell phone. I was uh, forced to do that because like, I didn't want it to. I wanted to buy a bank, frankly. I wanted to build a bank for crypto, um, focus on crypto. So I started the cell phone company because I was SIM swap four times and I had no other option. So I started a company for myself uh, to protect myself from cell phone security because I personally believe that I was kind of very good in security. And every few months I would get things up and I got so tired and I said, what the hell is this? I'm a telecom engineer by degree. Okay. So I said, this is not a rocket science. Like how do we solve it? So we solved it. Um, and my friends started asking for solutions and then it kept on growing, growing, growing. And now we have over a dozen people working with us. Oh my God. Uh, protecting people. So how, um, how long has it funny been in existence? Uh, just over two years now. And where did you start it? Are, are you, I know you're, well, you mentioned to me before, you're based in Puerto Rico, just like me, which is, it's almost weird. We should almost be just doing this in the same room. It seems so strange. I know, eh? <laughs> yeah. But uh, did you start it there or here or did no, you start it somewhere California. else? California. 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 Yeah. Is that, were you, were you in the Bay Area until you came here? Uh, yeah, I was in Sacramento. Yeah, we've seen a lot of, uh, there's been so many people from the big cities and, you know, especially the West Coast that have just been flocking down here. It's an exodus. I don't know if there's just going to be a, a dearth of talent in that area, in those areas anymore. I think yeah. crypto, the whole cryptoverse is just coming down here to San Juan and Dorado and Puerto Rico. Yeah. Um, so no, certainly. You, 
you um you mentioned something to me before we came on this about uh, the distributed networks that you are really kind of working closely with. And I'm wondering, can you talk a little bit about what that means to you when you'd say a distributed wireless network? Uh, absolutely, Monica. So uh, a lot of things that have happened to me personally and in, in the, it's like, you know, I didn't intend to do that. It just came along. And I know it's a cliche to say that, oh, we had a problem, but actually uh, with the Bitcoin ATM, the challenge, just the reason the company was started was because think about 2013 when you, we were dealing with BTC and Mt. Gox, you know, it yeah. was very difficult to buy Bitcoins. So we wanted a Bitcoin and there was no other option to buy. So we just said, let's start a Bitcoin ATM. <laughs> so that no was pretty much how the start, like, you know, it was basically started off, started off something for ourselves, similar to cell phone service too. Uh, when it started off, it was basically because I was saying the same stuff left and right. And I had no other option but to start a company. So, and I didn't start it as a company company. I started for myself. Okay. And it was just that people start asking for it. So I said, okay, let's do it. Because uh, one of my friends, he got SIM swapped around, I think, midnight. Uh, Charlie Shrem. And uh, he basically said that, oh, can someone get a number back? So I hacked the number back. And that basically... You know, and he said you should offer the service to others. So he tweeted about it, and then the product kept on growing, kept on growing. Um, so similar, like you know, um, I think I read somewhere when life gives you lemon, you make a lemonade. Yeah. So that's what happened. Um, uh, you know, we have so a lot of our clients are like, what is Ifani? Ifani basically is cell phone service for uh, important people. Uh, we basically protect against SIM swap, and that's what our bread and butter. Our clients are generally. Uh, governments like you know, uh, Fortune 100 company, CEO of real estate, realtor, hedge fund managers, exchanges, these are clients. Uh, but some of the clients are celebrities and they work in a very remote area. So they will have ranches and we had a problem of coverage. So we they will have a ranch and they didn't have a coverage there. So now we have another problem that we have a client that we cannot serve. So we start uh, building a network for them there. That's and building a network is like, you know, very, very uh, tough because like, think about you have to buy spectrum, you have to buy antennas, you have to do, but we found a way to do it almost at a very negligible cost, like similar to what a Wi-Fi router would cost setting up. So we started doing it and the results were pretty decent. So we said, okay, why not we give it to all the clients? So, um, and when we looked at Ukraine economics, we can probably save 90% of our cost. Wow. Of using a traditional tower. So we said, are you okay if your neighbors share the same cell phone tower? And they wanted to be the guy who wants to share. So the neighbors came along and say, I have the same issue too as this guy has. So now how do you incentivize someone? Token. And that's where the token economy, come, economy comes in. So we start building a solution for our clients only. Uh, we, are, we are being uh, providing them with a router, which is similar to a Wi-Fi router in your house. And you can start sharing your cell phone service with other people. And it's an invite-only service for now to just test out things. Uh, but ultimately, the goal is that can you reduce the cost of providing telecom by 90%? Wow, that is huge. Reducing yeah. all telecom costs. So that means eventually that will trickle to the consumer directly that we're going to just start seeing these astronomical monthly fees for tele for having a phone service is going to, with your network, going to be able to just be challenged and dropped that far? Uh, that's the goal, absolutely. Like right now, we uh, we pay around $4 per gigabyte to carriers. Uh, so by this, you can probably reduce it 25 cents to 40 cents per gigabyte. Oh my and, goodness. Uh, yeah, and the goal is like, you know, we have Wi-Fi router in every house. Why can't we have a cell phone tower in our house? Um, and the world is going to the internet now, like, you know, you'll have hotspot, like computer will have. So I think we'll get rid of Wi-Fi in the next uh, five to 10 years. So why not make the switch right now? So, um, and 80% of the coverage happened normally in, in indoor. So like when you are indoor, that's where you use most of the cell phones. Yeah. So what if we start, and that's where the big companies cannot come. They can't come into your house and install an antenna. So, but if we can set up a structure where you can set up an antenna in your house and and uh, your neighbors can take access to that. That basically makes a lot of sense. That sounds amazing. I love this idea that more and more places, more and more pieces of the market are gonna be driven by distributed um, technology, right? So that you can just have you and your, your chosen friends or you and your chosen community members that 
you can either back up your information to or share with your Wi-Fi, distributed Wi-Fi network, or, I mean, it's just, it's so much more empowering to think of rather than putting everything in the hands of one large uh, company to be able to like really just empower a small network of people that have already been vetted. Cause I mean, once we know good people, we know good people, we know to trust them. I mean, it's, it's yeah. so much more of a peace of mind issue to, to be sharing a network with your own neighbors where you know that, you know, they've had Thanksgiving dinner with you or you, you borrow a cup of sugar from them or whatever it is. I mean, that already yeah. just shows such a level of concern that you really never get to have, no matter how good the customer service is, a big company, it doesn't yeah. really ever compare. So it's really cool to see how you're, you're leveraging the power of community, not just the crowd. Absolutely. And I think uh, the reason why we start, I think uh, like Monica can have her own cell phone service for their own people. So I think communities can start their own cell phone services. So the way we were doing it, like, you know, we empower anyone to kind of become like a Shopify for starting a cell phone service where you can just one click, you can start your own cell phone career. Um, And the cell phone carrier that's powered by people. Our approach is that um, because we are a traditional carrier, we actually can um, work with the traditional carrier as well as connect Monica cell phone tower too. Yeah. So wow. basically a traditional carrier and Monica towers basically converge to provide the best coverage. And if you are able to do better, you'll we'll switch to you. But if traditional carrier is better, they will switch to them. Uh, so that's what we are trying to. We are trying to fill the mar- gaps in the market. Um, and uh, it's a combination of like a centralized versus decentralized network. Yeah. That we're trying to build. Have you given any, you said incentivizing people, uh, you said there would, there would be token, tokens. Do you have a token that's released at this time or are you considering it? And have you like, uh, yeah. been firmly done your tokenomics or any of that? Uh, we have looked into tokenomics, frankly. Um, I'm not a bad, good person for that. Like I'm not the best person for that. And, you know, we want to, first of all, I have been, um, I've shared away from tokens for the longest time. Yeah. Because a lot of companies will have a token for no reason. So I always look at, okay, the business model makes sense if there's no token. If you take out token from it, does the business make sense? Absolutely does, right? Like, you know, you want to share coverage. So how do you distribute money between people? Uh, do you pay Paul them every month? Uh, and like, you know, why do you, and the cost and everything does not make a lot of sense. And people may want to maybe receiving a five cents per, per minute. Like, yeah. how do you make those payments? So that's the easiest part of it. And then you have to pretend 1099 and everything. It's better just to compensate them in form of tokens. Um, so that's what I think, uh, uh, like how many tokens will be divided to how many person? I don't know. That's why I'm saying it's an experiment. So we want to build a product first that actually works before we start giving all the tokens. That makes a lot uh, of so, sense. Yeah, and that's why we started with our clients first to test out things and everything. And obviously we have a small, we have a very pretty decent community within our team. Um, who are our users who are testing out the product and basically uh, before we roll out to the general public. That's fantastic. That's absolutely wonderful. I can't wait to find yeah. out more about uh, when you're going to be incorporating a coin and, and how that's going to work. I specialize in tokenomics. So I'm always at my little ear to the ground on yeah. what, are the, what are their tokenomics? What are they doing? Because yeah. I have a... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but ultimately tokenomics is pretty simple, right? I think the ultimate goal is like, you know, Monica is that uh, whenever we incorporate tokens, it has to make things better rather than worse. It shouldn't add friction to the entire system. Precisely. Uh, so that's what I think. So I just think that how can you transfer value between ecosystems much faster? Um, and if there's no token, does it work better with the token? Would it work worse with the token? Precisely. So, yeah. I've, uh, I've worked on some, an economic model. Actually, I, I created yeah. an economic model. I've, I've published on it in a couple of places um, and it was picked up by the data-driven investor once they saw it on Medium or whatever. But, uh, and it basically is a deflationary economic model that can drive cost. Uh, they can drive price down to um, in such a way that basically you, you force the market to try to compete with you in a very difficult manner and you can go to scale and grab massive market share very quickly simply by being able to be so price competitive. So it made me think of that when you said that already you have the goal of being extraordinarily price competitive um, and even like, you know, just so price competitive, you're dominant that uh, I could see how very good tokenomics in place there could really augment that. So I'm excited to see what you guys are gonna make with that. Absolutely, like the goal of distribution systems is it should be better. You know, if we are saying, hey, centralized systems are bad, right? We need to do better job. Absolutely. Um, so you had mentioned in your bio, you had you talked about um, how you have been involved in 30 plus companies. Is that right? I've invested in 30 plus companies. And you've been investing in companies directly, not just in uh, cryptocurrencies for how long? Um, 
So my portfolio is probably 80% crypto, but 20% is outside crypto too. So it's been happening for the last 10 years, you know. In the last 10 years, yeah. mostly you've been, you've been, but you made the pivot to start investing directly into companies, not just their coin or whatever, or is this, are you talking oh, about I just would, early ICO yeah, I don't, participation? No, I'm not talking about ICO. This is basically investing into companies directly. And is that through a VC sort of methodology or are you just an angel uh, investor? Uh, mostly angel investment. Fantastic. Did you find yeah. any of the other companies that you were either investing in or maybe passed on help to guide you in what your next venture would be yourself? Or was it all just really, you became your own market, you had your own problem, you were the number one customer and you followed your own needs? I think, yeah, for all the things like, you know, what number one customer, uh, like, you know, for Bitcoin ATM, it was the easiest way for me to buy Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, and for cell phone, I was the user number one. Um, and for this network, I'll be user number one. Um, because I believe that I want to make sure that I serve my need first. Uh, and, uh, you know, like I don't want to, like a lot of people will will talk about distribution, but for bank account, they will go to Chase, Chase Bank. Yeah. You know, they will hate on, they will basically like to promote one product, but they'll use another product. Uh, so I think the, uh, if something goes wrong, like, you know, I should be the first victim um, or like I should basically suffer the first pain. If it goes wrong, um, it'll go wrong on you first. That's a, that's a great way yeah. to save face in the market. You say like, mm. I've debugged this completely. I'm, I've been the person that's been mad at customer service before I had customer service. Yeah, correct. So that's what it is, it is right? And again, ultimately what it is, it is um, as a distribution economy, it's our responsibility to make things that people want and people want to use. That's true. That is absolutely true. That's a tweetable almost right there. You know, make sure you make, make things that... Uh, people want want from you right you can't just so oh, yeah. if i make it i can convince the market to like this i'm sure they're going to figure yeah, out yeah. they need it once i show them Education yeah you shouldn't come with a of... solution yeah you shouldn't come with a solution first <laughs> for a problem the problem is uh there are two problems right number one problem is that uh data, data is expensive and we are, our devices are getting data hungry uh cost is going up cost will go up the second problem is there's areas with no better coverage so i'll give you an example of coachella uh burning man right there's no cell phone coverage there you know yeah. Uh, there are a lot of areas where it doesn't make sense to have it. So can we empower those small communities to build their own networks? Is there any um, component of the distributed wireless network that also um, is dealing at all with like VPN or the ability to cloak where a person's location is? Is that something that you guys have really addressed or is that just a completely different, not integrated? Because it seems like it's somewhat, it's, it's just like a half step away from things that you're already really chewing on and trying to solve for. So that's what we do at Ifani. I think uh, the concept of uh, distributed network is there. I believe it could be like an app store where you can actually buy apps. So you can say, I want to have a VPN. So you can just click on one button and now for $2 per month, you have a VPN on your phone. Yeah. Uh, and you can do whatever you want to do. Like uh, we were, in Nifani, we do have a product where we can actually cloak people's location and we can actually tell if someone is spying on you. So if someone follows you, we basically uh, will tell you, we actually get block calls, spoof call, spam calls. Uh, so we have the technology in Nifani. So then we'll probably start licensing out those technologies in the network where people can actually build. Because not everyone needs security, frankly. Uh, like with Nifani, we are not for everyone. We only serve the top 1%. So I think there you are... See that, I think, that market need ever expanding? And once you have the infrastructure in place and maybe cost comes down and there's tiered levels of, of this type of security, do you ever see that this is something that more than just the top 1% of people would uh, be a customer for? Uh, no, I don't think so. Like 99% of the customers in the U.S. are always looking for cheaper plan, regardless of how rich they are. Uh, if they give them like an iPhone, they'll probably give their DNA. You know, that's how the mentality works. Um, <laughs> and uh, we talk about privacy, but privacy is more like made in America. People will buy it as long as cheaper than made in China. So uh, if it's like on one side, they will basically say, like if Radin says over $5 extra, you, um, you know, we share your data, people will opt for it. So... Uh, general consumer do not care about it. Like for Ifani, that's why we had to separate both the companies because Ifani only serve like a very specific client of people. We actually not even offer our premium services to public. You have to go through a process. So it, if you go to website, you will not even see our premium product. Wow. Like only by invite only. We don't, we cannot onboard more clients. It's for specific set of people. Is it, um, but is it in your is it in your roadmap in the future to be um, no and even the distributed networks none of that is all going to be no ne just... distributed network of, distributed network of for everyone that's okay. where everyone can build so Monica can can build her own cell phone service okay right great. Uh, John can build her yeah they can build their own service I'm just saying that technology that we have with 
funny. Yeah. It's not for everyone. We are not allowed to give it to everyone. That makes sense. There's some restrictions on who we can give, who we cannot give. Um, it's like a bulletproof car. Think about it. Are you familiar with Secure Meet? It's a competitor to Zoom, but they're totally peer to peer and encrypted, and and they're not trackable, and you they can't be hacked. I've heard about it. The problem with um, again, Monica, with all of this pro challenges is that um, uh, a lot of times uh, when you change experience of things, it's very hard to get people to opt in. That's true. So I'll sim- I'll give you a simple example. If you have to use, if you're used to iPhone. And I ask you to use this another phone. You may use it for one month, two weeks, but after a while, you want to move back to your because you have services. Yeah. Um. So a lot of these services, like you know, are not a good experience. So we have looked into the Google phone. We have looked into the Peep phones, but they don't integrate well, right? People have people want to use Google Maps. They want to use Gmail. They want to use Google Search. Yeah. I use DuckDuckGo as my primary search provider, but sometimes I have to move to Google because the results are not as great. Yeah. Um. I want to go somewhere now. Company have to track me. So, um, so what I believe is that products have to be really good. Like if you use Ifani, I'll give you example. Uh, it's just a regular cell phone service. You don't see any difference from your regular cell phone service. You can make a call. You can receive a call. Uh, the only thing is you are better and secure. Yeah. Uh, you, so. And is the that the same type better. of like apples to apples comparison that you're going to make sure is there for the uh, distributed wireless networks as well? That once Absolutely. people have their distributed pod or whatever, their their community that they're leveraging and they're working with, it looks it works exactly the same. 100%. So you should not even know that you're using a distribution network. Our goal is to make the transition as seamless that a person is a user would not notice that he's using a distributed network. It has to perform better than a traditional network. If it doesn't, then we have failed. Yeah. That's amazing. I, this is a very yeah. exciting tech. I can't wait until it's not invite only. And, and uh, we do have a lot of links from you already that are going to yeah. be in all the show notes. So people yeah. can really check you out and dive in. But, um, you know, being able to even get on your on your wait list to see how this is going to go. I can't wait until you're scaling it out. I can think of so many places that I go. I travel a lot to rural places. I like to be outdoors. I have friends that live in the middle of nowhere. And yeah. going there and, you know, being able to bring a real solution to them and their small pods of communities that are maybe just a few miles apart that just sounds really like an exceptional, cool thing to bring to the market. So thank you. Absolutely. Personally. Like, uh, yeah, like, uh, thank you. So a lot of time, like, you know, we have technologies which are good, but you, if, if I ask you to use a different thing to use this thing, like Signal app, I love Signal app. Like, you know, it's, it's a good app. I have like a couple of similar apps, but a lot of people will resort back to WhatsApp because that's convenient. You know, right. text message is convenient. So yeah, what, what, our goal is to make sure that people don't have a change in behavior, but still have a 10 security. That makes a so lot of sense. If you have a convertible car, I don't take you out of a convertible car and put you in a tank. Right. I want you to drive a convertible car, but with a tank security. Exactly. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's fantastic. Well, I'm thrilled about the, I mean, this even just these three companies that you kind of brought into the world, I'm just thrilled to see how they've, they've really brought massive value. And clearly the longer they've been in the, in the market and out in the world, the, more, the greater that they've grown. So your track record is fantastic. And I just can't wait to find out when this is going to be available now. I mean, even, even in San Juan, I have you know one, pretty much one provider that I can go with for my internet. And if that- We'll change it. We'll that's, change it. I cannot wait until that changes. Thank you very okay. much. Please, please uh, expand <laughs> to San Juan and Dorado area yeah. early. I will be an early adopter of this. I promise. You're early urban adopter. <laughs> no, perfect. Like, no, I think I'm very excited for that too because the response that we are getting and, uh, is, is awesome, right? Like, you know, people want to have their own co-op uh, cell phone services. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited about it. It's fantastic. I'm so glad that I got to talk with you about this and get a heads up and early early knowledge of it. Um, in terms of keeping an eye on you, we've got we got links for where people can find you and where they can keep an eye on what you've got that might become more available as it gets beta tested and rolls out. And uh, yes. I can't wait to have you back on the show once you've launched and it's really out there and we can talk to, and we can maybe even have some customers talk about their experiences and how it's just seamless for them. I'm just excited to see this. And I'm also... Not gonna lie, I'm excited to see my cell phone bill go down too, or my or my wireless. All of my all of my data bills go down. That'll be very nice because right now it's just like I have no choice. I just take what they'll give me, and so thank you yeah. for bringing some competition to this space. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. You know, yes. like, you're welcome. Like you know, I'm I'm really excited for this too. Again, my goal is to make things that are much simple. 
Wonderful. Well, again, I just want to thank you for being on the show. And uh, I can't wait to keep an eye on what you're going to be doing next and how soon this is going to be available to us in the San Juan area. And, um, <laughs> and until then, I guess we'll just we'll do a round two once we've got another another press release from you on the uh, on the latest. Absolutely. I'd love to share more. Well, thank you so much, Hasib. It's been an absolute thank pleasure. Uh, again, I'm with Hasib, oh, Has, Hasib Awan. Oh my gosh, I thought I was going to get it perfectly. And then I had to mess it up <laughs> in the end. Um, the uh, CEO of Afani and co-founder of BitAccess, which was a Bitcoin ATM company. So clearly someone who knows what's going on in the, in the crypto and needed, needed usability space. And he's you know made early moves and he's doing great things. So please keep an eye on all of these cool companies. And um yeah, on that note, I will catch you in our next interview, hopefully round two soon. Thank you so much, Hasib. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The New Trust Economy. We'd love to hear your comments on today's show, as well as suggestions for future topics and guests. Visit us online at newtrusteconomy.com or on social at newtrusteconomy. Thanks for exploring The New Trust Economy with us.